Good afternoon. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another Leader of Thought Leaders Business Lab Live Edition. Tried to go live on my page. It didn't work. So here we are on my personal Facebook profile uh, and we will be, I'll be sharing it out or maybe you're watching on YouTube and you're watching the recording, whatever way it is. Welcome. So great to have you here. Today we're actually going to be talking about how to build your email list without the hustle and grind. Uh, and we're going to be welcoming our guest expert today, who is Chelsea Benzel, we'll, who will be coming to us from Bali today. So she'll be with us any minute. But before we get get started, get gartered, started, uh, my name is Samantha Riley from samantharily.global. Uh, I am the creator of Black Diamond, the uh, advanced mastermind for thought leaders and experts who want to double their income, double their freedom and double their impact. And who doesn't want that? Also, the uh, you can look us up on iTunes for Thought Leaders Business Lab podcast if you want to join us there. I've got a few people joining us. Hey, Kate, so great to have you here. Hosway, Russell, so good to see you all. Uh, Prakash, so great to have you here. Hopefully, we will have Chelsea jumping on soon and letting us know that she's here because, like I said, she's going to be helping us with building our list, which, you know, everyone says we need to be building our list. You need to build your list. And a lot of times it's just like Chinese to an English person, right? It's like, that's really great. We know we're meant to be building it, but how do we do it? Uh, okay, so <laughs> we're having lots of fun today with tech because Chelsea has just said it won't let me comment. So this is super interesting. Uh, very strange having lots of fun today with tech. There we go. Let's see if we can add Chelsea in. No, it's not going to let her in. So that's just great. That is. Let's have a look. Uh, bring Chelsea on camera. But I add her in because otherwise... And here we go, Chelsea. Hi, How are you? We finally did it. This is the uh, <laughs> the entrepreneur's curse of tech, right? <laughs> but yeah, so, but we persevered and we, here we are. We did. So great to have you here. I'm so pleased to have you joining <laughs> us today from beautiful Bali. I'm so jealousy. I've got my, my jacket on and you're in the beautiful <laughs> Bali clothes. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I'm very blessed. Unfortunately, my backdrop doesn't really represent where I am at all, but it's yeah, all it's sunny, good. it's warm. Excellent. Yeah. Well, before we jump into uh, what we're going to talk about today, because I absolutely love your take on things, and we've had a couple of great conversations about, uh, you know, the difference between taking action and not taking action and that not doing it with the hustle and grind doesn't mean that you just sit under a tree and manifest and make things happen. So I love that we've got this same <laughs> idea. So I'm really looking forward to jumping into what we're going to talk about today. Do you want to just give us a rundown of what we're going to talk about? Yeah. So basically that's the, the core of it is how do you talk about an approach building your business without falling prey to that hustle and that grind and that really like that struggle mentality while still taking action because it, there is there's almost like two ends of the spectrum there's either people who are like completely anti hustle like just yeah like you said sit under a tree and manifest and just like hope that it comes to be and then there's I guess the other side of it would be the really like go getter, don't stop until you get it done, no matter what, no matter what happens, like to your health, to your yeah. energy, you just like keep your eye on the prize and you do it. And I don't think either of those work at the end of the day. It's finding that middle ground and how can you bring in things like your intuition and knowing uh like we'll talk about having a really strong why having that inspiration to pull you forward so you're still taking action you're still doing the things that maybe are uncomfortable and out of your like your comfort zone but are moving you forward or pulling you forward versus forcing it and staying motivated and yep. with that how do you bring that into the online space building an online business yeah and i love that you say finding that 
finding that middle ground because I thought for a minute you were going to say finding that balance which wouldn't <laughs> because there's no such thing as balance so I was like oh wow here we go but no there's no balance so let's just go okay we're not going to hear about balance on today's live all right so no. Uh, just tell us quickly before we talk about how to build our list, tell us about the kind of people you work with and what you do. And while you're telling me, I'm just going to share this onto my page, seeing we've had some tech issues. Um, yeah, can you just let <laughs> us know what it is that you do and the kinds of people that you work with? Yeah, absolutely. So I work mainly with online service providers. So someone who has a, a service to offer that they can um, put out there and work location independently like a big part of what I do and I think a big part of why people are attracted to what I do is because I've done that I've created that um, being able to bring my business with me no matter where I am in the world and that's what I want to help people do so coaches people who have an online course or even I've worked with some yoga teachers that want to start working with clients one-on-one -on -one and just bring that more into the online world. So not so much around, um, you know, if you have an amazing product that you want to get out there, I'm probably not your girl, but I, yeah, I love to work with people who have that passion, that drive to share something maybe they've been through and overcome and they can share with other people to help make the world a better, better place at the end of the day, I think we all have that. that yeah, absolutely. Whatever it is that absolutely. we're doing. But it's really that like that um, little bit woo-woo, little bit spiritual that like I already mentioned the intuition piece and like bringing more of that into the mainstream and into the, our everyday lives. I'm really, that's really a big passion of mine. I love it. And I know that the people that show up in my world uh, and you would be the same. We're attracting people in there who truly believe that, that we're here because we've got a message that we want to share. We're here because we really do want to make an impact. But we can't make an impact if our business isn't making money. Um, so it's all about getting that balance of making the money, doing what it is that we want to do, but also getting our message out. And I think it's just that, that weaving of those three places, which is, you know, where we're sitting. So we need to really build our email list. Building our tribe on social media is great, but we really do need to have an email list. Um, you talk about building your email list or what we're going to talk about today, specifically going from zero to 500, but I'm guessing that we can use the same strategies that you're going to talk about to build, you know, to take it from that sticking point. Maybe you're sort of sitting at a thousand, you're like, just can't get it moving because I don't know, something miraculous happened. So take us through how we can actually get our email list moving. Yeah, so that, and that's exactly right. That really, the reason I say zero to 500, it's like any surge of growth that you can inject into your email list, no matter where you're at, if you're at that place where it's a bit stagnant. And so what I teach and the people that I work with are often very, very new in their online business, just getting started. And I see them focusing on all the wrong things. They're so fixated on their website or even on social media and having everything be just perfectly polished. I say all the right things everywhere because somehow we just know what our people want to hear. And a lot of times, yeah, granted, we do know our ideal client. We know their pain points and we know their big vision and all of that. But there's magic that can happen when you bring people into your email list who can then start to tell you exactly what they are struggling with, what they want from you, basically. And then if you can pull that and create something that they really want in a free gift, like in a lead magnet is what I call it. I used to call it more free gift, freebie and all of that. But I've switched gears because we don't want to attract people who just want free stuff from us. Oh, we want I like it. We, yeah, the energetics behind that, those words were huge. When that clicked, it was like, yeah, no, lead magnet. We're magnetizing our ideal clients to us, to our email list. And so that's really the initial step is creating a lead magnet that people really will get excited about and will like hands down, like drop everything and, oh my God, I see this online and I, I got to have it. Yeah. So of course they're going to sign up. And, 
I think the, the big thing with that is you could create anything for a lead magnet. You could come up with like a list of whatever it might be, the top mistakes that most entrepreneurs make or whatever it could be. There's so many ideas, but if you can really tailor it to what are your people's point A, like where are they right now? And what is that first step mm. that they can take to start moving towards the point B, which is when you're done working with them, they've gotten the results that you can give them. But really, like, what's that really simple step that they can take and what quick, easy win can you give them so that once they get that value from them, from you, then they're, they're already in. They see that you can help them. They see that you're the one who gets them because you met them right where they were at. And you can start to build that relationship with them so that they're excited about whatever you have coming next. Maybe it's in your email sequence once they're in the door from your lead magnet. They're excited to see what you're offering. And it's not just like out of left field. It's aligned with that path that you're taking them through from their point A to point B. Totally. And on that, I see a lot of people, especially not so much after people have been in business for a while, but when they're first starting out, they just... They, there's two mistakes that I see. One of them is they're too afraid to give away their their value because they think, no, no, I want to be paid for that. So they try and give away something that's really not valuable at all that no one wants. Um, and the other thing that I see is not having a clear understanding of where their their avatar, and it's a word I don't really use, their ideal client is at. Like where are they right now and what is it that they need? So that exactly like you say, so that people go, oh, I want that. Because people are getting more and more uh, choosy and selective about where they're giving out their email to these days because I don't know anyone that says, oh, let's subscribe to 20 things today so we can get another 20 emails in our inbox. Like, <laughs> it's 2018, not yeah. 1994, where we get that little ding and we're all excited. <laughs> <you know? laughs> uh, so it's got to be something that is really uh, you know, valuable to, that, to someone to get that little quick win. Yeah. And I think that's exactly it. It's giving them what they actually want at that point, like really meeting them where they're at and getting clear on what is it that you think that they need and creating that because you think it's going to help them and you think it's the perfect solution. But if it's not what someone is actually like, for example, waking up in the middle of the night, stressing out about and worried about, and they're just really, they just wish someone would solve that problem for them. If you can speak that language, that's the gold. And that's where people are going to just be become your biggest fans and become your highest paying clients because you get them and they trust you right away and you give them that value and it's huge. Totally. Later on, you can give them what you know they need. Exactly. And how awesome is it when someone has collected your lead magnet and then you get on a call and... Um, you know, and they say to you, oh, my goodness, were you reading my mind? That's exactly what I was thinking. And you're like, yes, that's so awesome. You know, that's, that's exactly where we need to be. We need to be like in the, the crystal ball of, of what's happening in their world. So, Chelsea, once we've created this amazing lead magnet, the next problem that I find a lot of beginner entrepreneurs do is hold on to it that put it in their jacket. They're too afraid to put it out into the world. And there's no, we're not going to be able to build our email list by creating a lead magnet. We actually need to get it out there. So what, what's the next step once we've created it? Yeah, good question. Because again, this can be, you can kind of fall back into old patterns after this step. It's like, hey, I've, I've got this awesome lead magnet. Now I just need the perfect website to put it on and build out this whole website and, and like, you know, plant the seed for the lead magnet here and there. Really, all you need is a landing page, a one page website that you put only the lead magnet up on just a headline that catches their eye a list of bullet points about what are the benefits that they're going to get from it, a place to enter their email address, and then they're in. And mm -hmm. so a lot of people that come to me, like I said, I work with people very early on. I say, hold off on building your website. You really don't need it. Let's get you set up with a landing page. Let's get you set up with the email like service provider, MailChimp, ConvertKit, whatever you use. And then the email sequence that follows that, that's really where you start to build that relationship with them and then take them, like I said, on that journey down that path that they're on. 
Yeah, absolutely. And back in, oh, I can't remember, it was probably about 2010 with my first coaching, uh, my first coaching business, I didn't have a website either. I didn't really know anything about these automations and um, I, I had an e-commerce site at the time but I hadn't really got into this coaching space. And what I did was I would email, uh, I would personal message everyone that joined my Facebook page and say, thank you for liking my page. Would you like my free lead magnet? And just if you would like it, give me your email address. And I used to manually enter them at the beginning before I even had a website. (laughs) And people just wouldn't do that these days. But you know what? I built a nearly (laughs) six-figure business by doing that and didn't even have a website. Website. I love that. And that just goes to show too, I don't, I can't speak to what other people were doing back then, but sometimes it's the thing that's a little bit counterintuitive. It's doing the thing that other people aren't doing and you stand out that way and you build, I'm sure you built a better like one-on-one personal connection with those people that you reached out to individually. Sure. It was a lot more work, but you built that connection and you stood out and look where it got you. That's huge. Yeah, because you're right. It opens up conversations. So I used to learn a lot about people instead of just magically, I mean, I'm not going to lie. I wouldn't do that these days, but it's a great way to start. Mm -hmm. And I'd want to touch on what you just said too about learning about people and where they're at. That's sort of where this whole email list starts to come full circle. It's that okay, you, you figure out what people want, where they're at, you bring them in. But then once you bring people in, you even, you get an even better idea of what people want, what can you polish up, what can you um, start talking about in a different way. You really get that picture of what people want and where they're at. And then you just keep like honing that and keep feeding that back into your marketing and everything that you're doing. And it's just, it's just going to skyrocket from there. So we talked about creating the lead magnet that is the, what's the word, like the, the sugar high of your, your ideal client's world, really, isn't it? It's like, it's like chocolate. Um, and we've talked about you know, the fact that you don't need a website and that just a landing page is okay. But now let's talk about without the hustle and grind because... You know, what we have mentioned there is a little bit of hustle and grind. I just said, you know, this is what I used to do and open up these conversations. (laughs) And there was a little bit of hustle there. So tell us, you know, how we can go about that and still be not in that space of burning ourselves out. In that space. Yeah, absolutely. Well, luckily with things like that, we don't, we have the tools nowadays that we don't need to hustle to that extent to like do everything manually there are systems that can totally help us. And again, systems can feel a bit overwhelming when I talk systems. I mean, like setting up your automated email sequence, getting things like Facebook ads and and all of that like techie stuff that really is going to buy you a lot more time and sanity. But it goes so much deeper than that too. It's like really um, tuning back inward and, and asking like, what feels aligned here? What feels like it really comes from me, not just these strategies that whoever is teaching and I'm doing them because I should. And so, and like going back to that, what you did about reaching out um, one-on-one and like just doing things that seem like, okay, I really want to do this. It might not seem like the smartest idea or whatever, but tuning back into our intuition and following those gut instincts in terms of how you want to show up. And a lot of times it's when you can really give yourself permission to listen to that and to listen to like what you maybe want to experiment with or what you want to put on the table and offer and whatever, even if it goes against what that mentality around like hustle, grind, work your tush off and really like put yourself out there. And so what I really help people with is when people come to me, like it's those coaches, those service providers, and they want to share their unique gifts. That's exactly it. It's like people are going to want to work with you because you show yourself, you shine, you show up online as your truest, authentic, most vulnerable version of yourself. So the more that you can peel back those layers and just be your imperfect, messy self, 
the less work and the less strategy and the the less like fighting it is to do everything by the book. It's just like, oh, okay, I can just show up and be myself and people will want to work with me or people will want what I have to offer. It just really, it takes Absolutely. So what I'm hearing there, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that the hustle and grind is when we're doing things oh out God. of alignment with our values. With our values. Yeah, absolutely. And out of alignment with our values and out of alignment often with our why. I think it's when we lose sight mm. of our why and what our vision is that we're creating and what we're working towards that if we don't, if we lose sight of that, we lose that like path that we're on where everything feels aligned, things feel good. It's not always easy and it's not always comfortable, but it feels in alignment with that. But it's when we lose connection with our why and with our big vision that it just gets a little bit off and things feel just a little bit not in alignment. And that's when that, that grind comes in. I heard the, this, um, sort of analogy about if you, it was about baseball. So I know baseball is not really big in Australia. Oh, baseball is my favorite. No, 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 I, it's my oh, good. favorite sport. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. You might resonate with this then. It was about, if you think of a pitcher, he's standing on the pitching mound, he's got the ball in, in his glove and he's about to throw it. If everything's working in his shoulder, everything's in alignment, he can throw, he can take that action with all the force needed to, you know, get the job done versus if things are out of alignment, if things aren't working as they should, then he's still going to take that same action. He's maybe going to have the same outcome, but it just is out of alignment. Things Mm. are grinding. Things aren't working the way they should. And so it's the same action, but things are a little bit off, things are out of alignment. So if you think about it in terms of that, if you spend the time, like maybe it's gonna, in that example, if we go down that, that rabbit hole, maybe he needs to spend the time, the money, take a game off or whatever to like do the healing that's required, but he's gonna get so much more out of it. So it's that sort of thing, yeah. it's like taking care of yourself, getting back into alignment, even if that means taking a self-care day or whatever that is for you to really make sure that you're, you're on that path and you're aligned. Totally. So what we've talked about is creating a lead magnet and putting it out into the world so we get people in our email list. That is something that probably everyone that has been listening in goes, yep, there's nothing new about that. We've heard that a million times. However, what I feel like the gold is in this is if you haven't taken action on that yet or you don't know how or it's feeling out of alignment, that's actually where that's where the gold is. That's what's going to help us getting people into our email list. So it's more about taking a step back and having a look. Have I created a lead magnet that's actually perfect for my ideal client that is va- adding value to their world that they really, really want? You know, if I was be- had this lead magnet in front of me, would I want it or would I go, I don't want to waste my time with that? Uh, it's about yeah. putting it out there and uh, really, I guess, also testing and measuring because you did mention Facebook ads before, which we totally need to, mm-hmm. to be able to leverage our business. We have to use paid marketing. I'm not someone that thinks that you can run your whole business just an organic, you know, connecting with people. But making sure that it is something that converts before you do that as well. So you really do need to check in and, you know, and go, is this right? Is this not right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, testing and using what you learn from your audience as you bring them in. And yeah, there's, it's just a continual process. Like that's sort of what we do as entrepreneurs. We're constantly in that beta, that testing mode all the yeah. time. I put a post up on my personal page last week and it's so, many, so many people have reached out uh, because I said, um, I'm I so said, glad uh, that I ran a, or that had a seven figure per year business back in the 90s before there was the whole world of the internet to tell me I was doing it wrong. And I still stand by that because (laughs) what works for me doesn't work for you and what works for you doesn't work for the next person. So it's okay to listen to these things or these gurus, online marketers, even us, and and go, okay, well, this is the way it works for us. Mm -hmm. Sure, try it on for size, 
but does it work for you? What do you need to test? What do you need to change? What do you need to, you know, tweak so that it works for you? And I think that, that, you know, in this day and age where we've got all of this information coming at us and people telling us, no, this is the only way, we start to get, um, we start to doubt ourselves and think that we're not doing it right. But in actual fact, if it feels right, it is right. Yeah. One hundred percent. I couldn't agree with that more. And at the end of the day, we are, we're the ones that get to make that decision. So it has to feel right. We're also the ones that need to see it through and follow that, like to take action on that. So it has to feel aligned. It has to line up. It has to be a match for you. So take everything you learn online or you read or whatever with a grain of salt and really check in, continuously check in. Like, is this right for me, for my business, for my audience? from my ideal clients and continuously asking yourself that so that you stay in alignment with your unique vision, with your why, with what you are here to create. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Someone's speaking my language. Now I, I, I know that you've got an awesome Facebook group and we'll pop the links in the comments below, but tell us about your Facebook group. Cause it's, it's, I love it. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah. So I'm the host of the Soulpreneur Society. It's a private Facebook group for female entrepreneurs, a little bit of a sisterhood. Um, and so we get up to all sorts of things in there, like sharing just the nitty gritty of what does it mean to stay in alignment? What does it mean to, you know, take that action to get out of your comfort zone, even when it's, you know, it's not easy, but it's still something that we feel driven to do we feel inspired to continuously put ourselves out there to continuously show up and to be ourselves and to just share you know what that looks like what's going on and just taking that imperfect action really I'm a big fan of that so it's sort of a support network in that form that we can just lay it all on the table and you know give ourselves permission to show up and keep doing the work and offering you know our gifts so we can share share that magic with the world and make a difference absolutely so like i said i'll pop the links in the comments below so that you can if you feel so inspired to jump into chelsea's facebook group but to wrap this up chelsea with anyone that's been watching what would you say is the main message you want people to take away from this conversation about building email lists and not hustling Yeah, what, it sort of cut out when you were asking that. What would I say about building your email list and not hustling? Yes. That would be, I would say, really, like I mentioned a few times, continuously checking in with the action that you're taking, whether you are doing it from a place of, you know, allowing it to pull you forward and also showing up and offering what your ideal client wants where they're at and how can you do that in a way that's not going to make you completely lose your mind and like <laughs> feel like you need to create something to be everywhere marketing it online and doing all of that come from your heart share something share your unique gift in that bite-sized really simple gift that you can give people even if maybe it's repurposing some content and put that out there trust that the people that need to hear that message are going to be on the receiving end of whatever you put out there. A lot of it boils down to that. Just trusting that you're doing the right thing. You're taking the right action. And if you continue to take the action, that's going to just become more and more clear and you'll get better and better at it. But just show up, just start taking the action and doing the things while checking in and making sure that you're not losing your sanity in the process. <laughs> which is a, just really a joke in itself, an entrepreneur not losing their sanity. We do have those moments, but it's about, I nearly said balance, <laughs> which, which <laughs> so not a thing. Anyway, Chelsea, it's been an absolute pleasure to chat with you. I know that we've got a few more chats organised in the future because you and I very much agree and have the same beliefs in a lot of what we're doing. So thanks so much for joining us. Uh, thank you so much if you joined us live. It was such a pleasure to have you on. We had so many people on today. It was so great to see everyone. If you are watching the replay on Facebook, then please continue the conversation below. Any comments, uh, I'll pop the links below. And if you're watching this on YouTube, thank you so much. And just 
head up to the bell up there in the corner and subscribe. Thanks, Chelsea. It's been such a pleasure today.